What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's question, can Tesla surpass other major car manufacturers in the future? My answer is yes. Yes they can, without a doubt. I'm going to give you a few good reasons why. Many people don't realize that there are laws and regulations in favor of Tesla. Not only Tesla, but other electric car companies like Tesla. I'm not talking about the ones that are half in, like GM, where they make a few thousand cars a year because they have to, because it's regulated that they have to. I'm talking about the ones that are all in, they just make 100% electric vehicles like Tesla. Okay, these are the companies that are gonna have an easier time in the future compared to the ICE vehicles, the ICE manufacturers, internal combustion engine vehicles. There are many regulations governing emissions and they vary from state to state. Uh, emissions regulations basically controls how much carbon dioxide or pollution your vehicle is allowed to produce. Okay, but I wanna get more in depth into the fuel economy standard, uh, which you may not be familiar with and many people aren't familiar with. The more specifically, the corporate average fuel economy standard. Okay, this standard is regulated by the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, and it just makes sense that this agency would regulate this because vehicles in mass, as you know, cause a lot of pollution. Okay, they damage the atmosphere, the ozone layer, uh, pollutes the waters, and it attributes to global warming. All right, these are no-brainers, we all know this. Um, but with the fuel economy standard, what that is, that basically means that they're governing how far your vehicle will go on a mile per gallon. Now, why is that important? This is important because the further you can go on a mile, miles per gallon, per one gallon, means that you are producing less carbon dioxide, if that makes sense. Okay, the further you go on the one gallon of gas means that you potentially are producing less carbon dioxide, less pollutant. Now let's get into this report by Rudders. The Obama administration rules negotiated with automakers in 2011 were aimed at doubling average fleet-wide fuel efficiency to about 50 miles per gallon by 2025. That means by the year 2025 that gasoline car companies are going to need to produce vehicles that get 50 miles per gallon. This is gonna be really tough to do. I mean, the average car now gets around 35, 40. Uh, to, so to increase this by 10, 15 gallons with no new technology, it's gonna be really difficult. Um, but you know who's not gonna have any trouble with this? Tesla or other electric car companies. They don't have to worry about these standards. Uh, this, is the kind, this is the point I'm trying to get into is that these laws and regulations are starting to lean towards a new vehicle, almost like a new revolution, you know, to the electric vehicle, renewable energy. It's cheaper, it's better. Also, the Obama administration said the rules would save motorists $1.7 trillion in fuel costs over the life of the vehicles, but cost the auto industry about $200 billion over 13 years. So what that means to me is that Two of the biggest industries are going to lose $2 trillion. That's right, $2 trillion over the next 13 years. Now, what two industries are going to be losing out? The automobile industry, specifically gas automobiles, and the gas giants. The gas giants like ExxonMobil and Sunoco. These guys are going to fight tooth and nail to, to fight against this. They, they don't want this to happen. All right, because they're losing money out of their pocket. And guess what? In August of 2018, President Trump is trying to freeze Obama's fuel economy standard. Now, who do you think is gonna benefit from this? Is it the American people? What do they have to benefit from this? Hmm, good question, right? Or is it the oil industry or the ice manufacturing car companies that have the benefit? Hmm, very interesting. Back to this Rudders report. Sierra's club's Andrew Linhart said freezing the fuel efficiency standards could hurt the American people just to pad the pockets of the big oil and auto executives. Well, no kidding. Who else is it gonna benefit? Obviously, it's not gonna benefit us, the American people, or anybody buying vehicles from these guys, you know, because we gotta fill up with our gas tanks 
and it just every day we're spending more and more money. The NH, the NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, said in its notice Tuesday it will consider a number of options, including continuing the 2021 requirements through 2025, rather than requiring a yearly increase. Under current rules, Fleetwood average fuel economy is expected to be around 41 miles per gallon in 2021, compared to an average of nearly 50 miles per gallon in 2025. So in reference to the car industry, if this freeze happens, it'll buy car manufacturers, gasoline car manufacturers, a few years. Uh, it'll give them time to figure out how to come up with vehicles that get 50 miles per gallon, which is no easy task. I mean, what are we going to do? Are we all going to drive uh, Pintos, you know what I mean, or Minis, Mini Coopers? Uh, I don't think so. Here in America, we love our big vehicles. We love our trucks, we love our SUVs, and we love horsepower. So this is not going to be easy. I expect gasoline car companies and oil companies to continuously lobby against laws like this. You know, they need to buy as much time as they can to line their pockets. That's what it comes down to. Really, they're stalling for the inevitable, uh, which is, in my eyes, the electric car revolution. It's bound to happen. It's on its way. We're already here. We're just at the beginning stages of it. It's going to take years, but we're here. Okay, so what happens if automakers do not follow the laws and they don't make vehicles that get 50 miles per gallon? Guess what? If a car company makes a vehicle and they can't meet these standards, what happens? They get fined. So if they get fined, are they really paying out of pocket? No, what happens is they turn around and they put, they put the cost of whatever fines or whatever regulations they couldn't meet, they put those costs back on the car so that new vehicles that are being sold are really being paid for, the fines are really being paid for by those people buying the new vehicles. It's ridiculous. What a gimmick, what a scheme. Some car companies realize they have to get on board and start making electric vehicles. Um, some other companies, they don't care. They're just going to ride it out and make as much money as they can for as long as they can. And once they get to the point where they can no longer keep up with the laws and standards, they're just going to call it quits. Again, they're just going to try to ride, ride the storm out for as long as possible. But let's talk about some electric car companies that are in the game or are trying to get their head in the game, but they're still losing money. The consumerist Ashley Keeler reports Chevy Bolt takes an $8,000 to $9,000 loss on each Chevy Bolt that's sold. So out of a $37,000 vehicle, they're basically losing a quarter to make an electric vehicle. Now, why are they doing this? It might be because they're, they're trying to stay in the game and they're trying to get their head in the game early, um, or it's regulated, but depending on what state you're in, you might have to make a certain amount of electric vehicles per year. So I'm not sure what the case is here, but uh, GM isn't the only car maker to take a hit. Analysts estimate most car makers are losing an average of $10,000 per electric vehicle sold. In 2014, Fiat Chrysler CEO revealed that the company lost about $14,000 for every battery-powered Fiat 500E sold. The main reason these companies lose money is because of the battery pack. They just say it's not cost effective. It costs more for the battery pack to put it into the vehicle than what the vehicle's worth. Huh. If there was only a company out there that thought of this, like Tesla, man, don't they have a gigafactory that produces their batteries for every Tesla cheaply? Hmm, smart move, huh? I wonder why other vehicle companies can't keep up just doesn't make sense. What we see happening is Tesla's electric vehicle prices are coming down. Okay, so we started with the Roadster at around $200,000. Then we went to the Model S and the Model X, you know, say for around $100,000. Now we're at the Model 3, which is around $59,000. And then in a few years, uh, the Model 3 revision should hopefully come down to around $35,000, which will make that car very affordable to really the middle class of America and, and throughout the world. Okay, now on the other hand, what's gonna happen with gasoline automobiles? Well, their prices are gonna continuously rise. Um, so again, 
Tesla's prices are coming down and the gasoline car companies, their prices are starting to rise. Why are they rising? They're ri rising because of fines and laws or because they are incorporating electrical motors into their vehicles because they have to. They have to keep up with the laws and regulations that are going to be coming in effect. Okay, so again, they're, they're going to eventually meet in the middle. There is no way gasoline vehicles are going to be able to compete and continuously make vehicles that meet these standards. Um, so let's say we get to 50 miles per gallon. Uh, what's going to happen after 2025 or let's say 2030 when the laws get more strict? You know, let's say now you have to produce vehicles that are up to 60 miles per gallon or maybe even more. If there's no technological breakthrough on ICE vehicles, then these companies are going to be forced to use electric motors in their vehicles. They're just going to have to, or they're going to have to hang it up and call quits. Easy as that. So once the gasoline vehicles and the electric vehicles meet at, let's say, the equilibrium, where they're right about the same price, um, what I, what I think is going to happen is gasoline vehicles are going to really dissipate really fast. I think that's going to be the breaking point when we see electric vehicles skyrocket. I mean, it's just going to make sense that people, instead of buying gasoline vehicles, they're going to buy electric vehicles because it's so much cheaper. It's, it's so much cheaper and cost effective. Uh, gas alone, let's not even, we're not even talking about the maintenance fees, you know, that you're saving without all the moving parts. When we get to this equilibrium price, one of two things are going to happen with gasoline automobiles. Uh, one, they're either going to conform and incorporate electric motors into their vehicles, or two, they're going to fold. They have no other choice. I mean, once you get to like 50, 60, 70 miles per gallon that you, you have to make and you have to meet emissions regulations as well, you're just not going to be able to compete. It's not like you just throw on a K&N air filter and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get another 20, 30 miles to the gallon. You know what are they going to do? Technology is not there. It's not going to happen. Now, you might be asking yourself, can the laws really make car companies produce electric vehicles? Well, the answer is yes, they can. Uh, California, in the United States, California, for example, they have a zero emissions vehicle program, which if it stays on track, will force all vehicles to become electric by the year 2040. That's right. Every single vehicle in California, if it stays on track, will be electric by the year 2040 with this program. And now there's also other states that have jumped on board with similar types of zero emissions vehicle programs. These states are Connecticut, Maryland, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Oregon, and Vermont. These, these states all have joined a zero emission vehicle program. These are more strict state laws in addition to the federal laws and regulations that already exist. I expect more states to jump on board and involve, get involved in programs like this to reduce carbon. U.S., the 2016 emission standard would require a 25% reduction in carbon emissions in semi-trucks over the next 10 years. Here again, Tesla can capitalize on this, on their head start that they have with their semi-truck prototype, as you can see here. These trucks are on the road logging hundreds of thousands of miles, even right now as we speak. Uh, the semi-truck should come out in 2019 if everything's on schedule. Let's recap why Tesla could surpass other major car manufacturing companies. First reason, Tesla's all in. 100% electric vehicle manufacturer. On top of that, they hold the top three spots for electric vehicle sales in the United States. Second, Tesla has a head start in many areas, specifically with battery production and with the semi-truck prototypes. Third and finally, fuel and emissions laws. They are actually in Tesla's favor along with other electric car companies. I want you to think about something, leave a remark in the comments. Is it coincidence that Elon Musk has a Tesla factory in California where the state laws are the most strict and in favor for electric vehicles, where they want to show by 2040 that all vehicles in California are electric vehicles. Is that coincidence or is that proof of concept? Let me know what you think.